Good evening and welcome to the night of college basketball. Um, before we get started, I just want to say my thoughts and prayers go out to everyone at MSU. This is a very tragic time for them, and may God be with them at all times. Amen. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Um, then we can talk college basketball. But, um, yeah, um, very tragic, um, just very scary to be honest, um, nothing really, um, just at a loss for words, but, you know, just very sad, but, you know what, I hope tonight, if you watch college basketball, always remember this, sports bring us together, even though we have rivalries, um, and we might not like another team or their fans, Understand this, there are bigger things in life than sports. There are bigger things in life than rivalries. And there's sometimes you just have to put that stuff aside. And you know what? Um, yeah, that, that is my message for all of you. Um, so let's talk college basketball. Anyway, now let's talk... All right, sorry, I'm losing my words here. Um, Sunday night Super Bowl was a great game. The Chiefs defeated the Eagles 38-35 to give Patrick Mahomes his second ring. Everyone is talking about the call at the end of the game where James Bradbury, the cornerback of the Eagles, grabbed Juju Smith-Schuster's jersey. Me, personally, I think the refs got the call right. Bradbury even admitted he held his jersey, so I don't like how Eagle fans are blaming the refs for Sunday night's loss. The Eagles lost because they cannot stop the Chiefs in the second half. And that is the main reason they lost. Um, that was a hold. They got the call right. Um, tomorrow night, Xavier plays basketball at Marquette. We're a five and a half point underdog. Now, very interesting. Xavier is always playing well against good teams, but can't beat horrible teams like DePaul and Butler. Two of our three Big East losses this year, well, all three Big East losses are on the road. Two of them are to god-awful teams like DePaul and Butler. So that means that it's obvious that we've beaten a lot of good teams too, Don. If... <coughs> Sorry. Um, let's see who we have beaten. We've beaten Connecticut twice. We beat Creighton once. We beat, um, <sighs> beat Creighton once. We lost them once, so that's our other third loss. So let's go over all the big ones. We beat Creighton once, Marquette once, Providence once, and we sweep to UConn. So it's pr and we beat Seton Hall once already. Still have yet to play them again. But it's pretty clear that um, we beat a lot of good teams, um, and... Yeah, so I could see them winning tomorrow night, but am I going to hold my breath that they will? No. I just don't see a path to victory tomorrow night. It's at Marquette. Where Vegas already came out. We're a five-and-a-half point dog. That's a lot in the Big East game. Um, we always struggle at Marquette. And look, guys, I've accepted that. While not winning the conference is everything, it would be nice. I already accepted the fact that Xavier is going to finish in the top three of the conference, that they're not going to win the conference. And I think it's better to have that approach than expect them to win the conference right now because if you, if you think they're going to beat Marquette tomorrow, I got news for you, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> anyway, enough of tomorrow night's hypotheticals, and let's get to tonight. Georgetown at Seton Hall. Give me Seton Hall to win at home. That game's already in progress. Seton Hall's up six, but I was going to pick Seton Hall anyway. Vandy at South Carolina. Vandy laying five. Now, guys, we're going to do a little something different tonight. If there's a game, I'm going to say the spread of each game because... Because um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you if you should bet on it or not. Fandy's a five-and-a-half point favorite at South Carolina. Um, I would not bet on this game. 
but I think Vanderbilt gets the win on the road. Creighton at Providence. Creighton a one-point favorite over Providence in Rhode Island. Guys, I think Creighton's due for a loss. Providence has one of the best home court advantages in college basketball, but they might be due for a home loss too. Creighton's playing really good ball on a stretch. Um, I would advise you that if you were to bet on this game, I would probably bet Providence money line, just because of the home court advantage and that Creighton's due for a loss. I do think Providence wins this game, but I urge you to not bet on it. But if you do, I think Providence is the logical choice, and I say that not confident at all. I think that game could go either way. It's going to be a barn burner. North Carolina State at Syracuse. Syracuse lane one. Um, don't bet on this game. This is a wacky spread, but I do think Syracuse gets a home win tonight, and they get a nice quad one win. For Jim Beheim and Joe Girard the third, Notre Dame at Duke. Duke lane twelve. Um, what is the logical bet in this one? Um, twelve is a lot of points for a basketball game, but Notre Dame has not been playing good basketball this year, so I think Duke wins at home. There's the money line is not valuable whatsoever, but Duke will win at home. I would not bet on this game. Illinois at Penn State. This is a definitely don't bet game. This game is very funky. Illinois laying three and a half on the road. <sighs> Penn State's really been struggling. They need a big win. Illinois is such an up and down team. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm just rant. You know what, guys? Sorry about that. I would take... <sighs> You know, you got to be bold. I wouldn't bet on this, but I think Penn State will win at home tonight. They get a big quad one win at home tonight against Illinois. Illinois is really up and down. Um, part of making selections is you have to be bold, and this is a bold one. Give me Penn State at home to upset Illinois. Missouri at Auburn. Auburn lane six and a half. I definitely would bet on this one, and if I were you, I would bet Missouri plus six and a half. Six and a half is a lot of points, and I don't think Auburn is a great team. While they just came off a tough home loss to Alabama, six and a half is a lot of points, and Missouri's a really good team. I do think Auburn wins at home, though, but plus six and a half for Missouri is the play tonight. Butler at Villanova. Villanova laying nine and a half at home. Um, guys, this is funky. Don't bet on this game. Um, I, I just that that's a lot of points. Butler's god awful. I know they beat my beloved Musketeers the other night. But they didn't play good basketball either. We just shot ourselves in the foot by turning the ball over 19 fucking times, and we only scored 21 points in the first half. Hard to win basketball games like that. Um, I wouldn't bet on this one, but if you're doing a parlay, Villanova money line is to play. Villanova's going to win this game tonight. Nebraska at Rutgers. Actually, going back to that, <coughs> not tune, I don't think, is a good coach. I don't think Neptune's a good coach, but I think Nova wins tonight. Nebraska at Rutgers. Rutgers laying 14. Don't bet on this game, but Rutgers will win at home. LSU at Georgia. Georgia laying four and a half. Guys, th this is a toss-up game. I would not bet on this game whatsoever, but I think Georgia wins at home. Kansas at Oklahoma State. Um, Oklahoma State laying... Oklahoma State laying... Um, or excuse me, Kansas laying one and a half. Give me Oklahoma State to pull off the upset tonight. Oklahoma State's really starting to find their groove on the court. And while I do think Kansas is a really good team, the Big 12 is just such a drama league. It's a funky spread. Give me Oklahoma State at home. Kansas State at Oklahoma. Oklahoma laying one. Now, this one concerns me only because... Um, I just think I cannot trust Oklahoma this year. I've picked them a couple times. They've let me down. It's it, They're a one-point favorite, though, at home against number 12, Kansas State. No, guys, screw it. Take Taking the risk. Oklahoma's going to win tonight at home. Why not? So my advice, if you're doing a three-team parlay tonight and you want to be bold, do Missouri plus 6.5, Oklahoma State money line, and Oklahoma money line. 
That's a bold parlay right there. St. John's at DePaul. St. John's lane one half. I'm just going to warn all of you, do not bet on this game. These teams are garbage. Both of them. I'm still... I, I'm still trying to live with the fact we lost to DePaul. I don't understand how we did that. They are awful. God awful. St. John's is only a one and a half point favorite though. What does that tell me? Well, here's what it tells me. St. John's fucking blows. Mike Anderson, the team has quit on him. But you know what? <sighs> Jesus. I think they get a road win tonight. I know I might regret this pick, but I think they somehow get a road win. But do not be surprised if DePaul wins. DePaul's got awful, though. I think St. John's wins because DePaul finds a way to lose more, and St. John's does win. But, guys, do not bet on this game. Michigan at Wisconsin. Now, this is the bubble game of the night. Two teams. Let's start with Michigan. Saturday night. The last five minutes of the game, Michigan didn't score one fucking point. Down the stretch in their biggest game of the year, the last five minutes of the game in Michigan's biggest game of the season, at home, a chance for a quad one win, they didn't score one fucking point, and they only lost by one. Now, what does that tell me? Jawan Howard can't coach. Did you see the inbound play at the end? The last play of the game, they had Dickinson open. They could have thrown the ball up to him. He could have laid it in the net. Michigan would have won. But they draw a ridiculous play up for Jet Howard that had no chance of working. And I don't want to hear, well, Indiana's a good team. Yeah, I know they're a good team. But that doesn't mean you can't that doesn't mean you get to go five minutes down the, the last five minutes of the game without scoring a fucking point at home. I think that is an example. That is something that can break a team's confidence. And it can break them. Those five minutes at the end of the game on Saturday night could be the five minutes that defines Michigan's season and costs them a bid in the NCAA tournament. Tonight, for me, tonight we learned something about Juwan Howard. And here's what we learned. If, how do you respond to the debacle Saturday night? You go out and win this game on the road at Wisconsin. You win tonight. This is a huge game for Jawan Howard and company. Because if they lose tonight, their tournament chances are virtually over. And... Another thing is, is Wisconsin hasn't played good basketball either. Wisconsin on the bubble, too, just coming off a mediocre loss to Nebraska on the road. Now, Nebraska's played a little better basketball this year, but that doesn't mean you should lose to them. <sighs> Wisconsin's a one-point favorite. I wouldn't buy on this game personally. I think this game could go either way. Tonight, we learn if Jawan Howard is capable of getting the team back together and rallying up and trying to make a last effort run to make the tournament. Or maybe Saturday night broke them. Maybe the last five minutes of the game, not making a shot, maybe that just killed their confidence and their season's over. You know, with the whole drama last year in Madison between Jawan and Guard, Michigan's got to keep their emotions in check tonight. I'm going to still pick Wisconsin. I just think Saturday night broke Michigan as a program for this year, broke the team. Can't go five minutes without scoring down the stretch in your biggest game of the year. Can't do it. Not that it's not it's not that Michigan lost, it's how they lost. Look, Indiana is a really good team, but to not score a fucking point in the last five minutes of your biggest game 
of the year at home, it, just unacceptable. And that falls on Howard. Team's got to play better. But anyway, um, that is all for tonight. Like I said, thank you so much for watching. Please tell your friends about this, and please subscribe and hit that like button. It would mean a lot to me. May God bless you all, and let's try to keep everyone. Just go up to someone tonight. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much they mean to you. It'll make their day. Anyway, have a good night.